Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yet again, today is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to today's Bible study. And as you invite somebody to join us, Let's take this moment and dedicate this session to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you yes, for Lord. the grace, the love, the peace that you have for us. Yes, Lord. We are grateful for the everlasting love you have in us, King of Glory. Yes, Lord. We yield ourselves to your word today. Yes, Lord. Speak through us. Yes, minister Lord. to us. Yes, Lord. Change us. Yes, Lord. Align us to your word. Yes, Lord. And to your dreams and visions. Yes, Lord. In these end times. Yes, Lord. That the glory of God mm -hmm. might be revealed in our generation. Yes, Lord. To the glory, honor, power, and praise of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. Our text today will be taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, from verse 22 to 27. As we end this text, where John gives us the revelation of the bride of Christ, the bride of the Lamb. And this is how it closes. He describes the temple. You see, previously we saw it from afar off. As 21 begins, glowing in glory. Then John takes us on a, a survey of its structure and layout. Then he gives us its measurements. And then he describes to us the materials that make it. Now crowning it all. He reveals to us the glory of this temple. Or this city. And we describe and explain to you that this city is both actual but also symbolic. And in the symbolic, it signifies the Lord's people. Now, when John begins to describe it, this is what the text says. But I saw no temple. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. The kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. They shall be no more night there. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But they shall by no means enter into it anything that defies. Or causes an abomination or a lie. But only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. May the word of the Lord be forever blessed. Have you ever tried to describe something? 
Wali ogeze za koku wake chintu chonyo nyo At the point you are short of words in terms of describing it. No to ka mchifunga nevi gambe evi nyo nyo le chintu tobilina. For what it actually was. Okuja ye chifana nye chitufu. This is the picture that is being painted here. Katuna cha chifana nyo wano chevatula ga. John has tried to define the city. Yokana ogeze za koku ogeda kunyo nyo le chifu gati. He has tried to define the glory that is before him. Na ogeze za koku nyo nyo le chitufu. But out of what now? Katinge bigambo biwedde wo to dis- describe what he's seen. Okugeza ko kunyonyole byo nabyala. He crowns it all up by describing to us what is not there. Akomekereza tunyonyole ebyo byatala mu be bitali. It is like you going for an event. Chiringo genda ku mukolo. And when you are asked to describe what you saw. Ne bakugamba tunyumize byo nabye wala byo. It is so colorful. Ngate birunji nyo bya nsusu that you end up describing not what was there but what was not because what was not is easier for you to describe than what actually was there no kobekereza ngo banyumiza byo ebita ebita abadde yo kubanga biwala bye birunji nyo okunyonyola it is john saying i have so much to describe yokana alinga kugamba ebyo kuogera binji but this is what I did not find there. And it is what he wants to paint the picture for us. And what he tries to do is to draw a comparison. Between two cities. Between the present and what he saw as the future. And this looks like you looking at two seemingly identical photographs. And somebody says try to find the difference olina kugamba kati nonye njawulu and when you look at these two photographs ngai wete gereza ifara nye bibili bino after some time you are able to see one or two or three or four things that are different oluva nyimo inabyo laba ke bilala ebye njawulu mu bifana nye bibili that are in one photograph but are not in the other ngachi no chili mu chifana nchili na eto chira mu chifana nye chira so we have a similar contrast here kati nebyo gera genya wano tulira bibili and john Yokana. then paints this picture to us Nalio katu sigire chifana nyichino but before we get into this i want you to see something happening here nina chenja gala wetegereze we see a similar contrast of what is happening what we bit of yogera gya ebili wo wano because what bring comes out in this closing chapters of revelation is a mirror of what we see in the beginning chapters of Genesis. So as we marry these two pictures, we are going to see something because in the beginning there is what we see God creating and we see him speaking the earth into existence and we see darkness on the face of the deep and we see the creation story come through we then see man created with no sin Ngatali muchibi with no evil around ngatali mubu byo kumweto olola and then as we go to chapter 3 we tuyingira sura yo kusatu we see evil come through e chibinga chiyingide now when we come to chapter 20 kati musule ya abiri we see evil and its source judge tulabe chibi ne sibuko ya chonge salidwo musango now with evil and all its Uh, appendages done away with katobu bine bintu byawe bonanga bijidwawo what we then see is a war a new world awe chidako ense mpya what we see is a new heaven tulabe gule pia similar to the where we were in the beginning nge chefa ananyiriza eri mu lubereberye mu nkome mu ntandikwa it is god's way of now working backwards to the very beginning katonga katonda linga kulaga nta ze Now we see humanity in a state 
where sin does not prevail. So mirroring the two. Here we see in the beginning sin in ascendance. And then we see it being judged and then come out. The and then you see humanity back to the very place where he was in the beginning. And this is a wonderful story. But let's look at today's text. What are those things that are missing? John having looked at the two side by side the present life and what he sees he then begins to see that which is missing and he notices four things verse 22 tells us that there was no temple because God and the Lamb are the temple. You see, the temple represented the place where man and God met. It was the place where man went to to have this moment of interaction with God. But John here tells us that that place place of communion is done away with. Why? Because the Lamb and God now dwells amongst the people. So God and the Lamb now are the temple. It is the place of communion between God and the people. So they don't have to go to a place because the Lamb dwells among them. They don't have to seek the Lamb because the very presence of the Lamb is with them. They don't have to seek the face of God because God dwells among them. Communion with them. So worship is evident in their merits. Because the worship of heaven dwells with them. So the temple which represented a physical place where the saints gather to meet with God now becomes an item that is not required. No designated location. It was, it will be like it was in the Garden of Eden. It is the place where men of all walks of life redeemed by the blood will now gather day and night in worship of God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. You see, let me explain to you something that will happen. When God created man in the Garden of Eden, He gave him the work. And His job was to work and keep the garden. To work and keep it. Or to guard and tend to it. Genesis 2.15 That was man's job. Now the same Hebrew word is found here. We see that with the priest. The role of the priest was to serve and to guard the tabernacle and the temple. Now, 
when it comes to this new city because God is in our midst there is nothing to God because God is in the midst every day of life through all eternity is a moment of worship because finally the glory of God that was restricted to a certain portion of space now covers the entire earth as the waters cover the sea. Praise Praise be to God. The second thing that John observes is that there will be no more night. In verse 22 to 23, there is an absence of light. Any objects emitting light. Now I want you to say something here. Because the opposite of light is darkness. So let's go back to the creation. When God created matter, it was darkness. So the Bible says, and darkness hovered over the face of the deep. Then God spoke and said, let there be light. Now here is the reversal of everything. God has created the earth. Now, he becomes the light. Remember, he spoke. The word brought the light into existence. Now the Bible tells us that the lamb is the light. Now what we see is the light now brings comes forth in the darkness. And the darkness goes away never to come again. What John describes to us, when he gets a glimpse of it in John chapter 1, and says this word was the life. And this life was the light of men. And as the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. He is speaking about the word, referring to the word of God, being the light of men. But not just the light of men, being the light of the word. And John here paints the picture that all creation we now bask in the light. Not the light of the sun and the moon that you created on the day four. No. What now becomes the light is the source of light. Who is the word of God that spoke all these objects into existence? So the glory of God now becomes the light. Uh, Let me explain the word glory a moment. Because until we understand that, then we miss it. You see, when they talk about glory, in human terms, in the Bible, glory is linked with boasting. When I say I glory in something, I am boasting about something. So you celebrate its worth, you celebrate its power, you celebrate its value. So glory is linked to the outward manifestation 
and celebration of an object. Katechitiwa chigeragea kukulabi bwe o kusanyu kobo kujaga nyokuba neti intuecho. So when we talk about God's glory, katukwa no etu geda kutiwa chaka. We are talking about the manifestation of God's presence of God's majesty of God's array of power and of holiness. Now, when we talk about God's glory, it is the radiance of His holiness, His worth, His perfection. So when His vis when the presence becomes visible, then we call that the Lord's glory. And now what happens here? This very presence of God now revealed becomes the light that you do not require any other object to bring forth the light. Then John explains to us the third thing that he sees. He says there is no night. Verse 24 to 26. He paints it before us and says there will be no night. Every day will experience the light of God's presence. And he says, and the nations will enter through the gates with their glory. And honor. Now, this is not, we are not talking about physical riches here. Because this will happen banned up. This is what we saw in Revelation chapter 14, 13. And Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. So what is this glory that then is brought by the nation? So who are the nations that we need? I talked about here. John tells us in the book of Revelation again. When he had this revelation, when he was taken up to heaven, he heard and he saw the creatures singing before God. And they're singing a song. And it is here that we understand that we who are redeemed have become unto God kings and priests and we shall reign forever on the earth. So these kings and priests of who we are we then bring glory and honor into this temple. What is this glory and honor? This glory and honor will be the result of acts done that bring glory to God. This is what Paul talks about in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 to verse 15 listen to what the Bible says he says for we are God's fellow workers and you are God's field you are God's building according to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And now he cautions and says, now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, 
precious stones. Wood. Hey. Straw. Each one's work will become clear for the day we declare. And we saw that day when the works of men will be judged. And it said, for it will be revealed with fire. And the fire will test each one's work. Of what sort it is. If anyone's work. Which he has built on it and yours. He will receive a reward. And if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved. Yet as through fire. Now the king are those that will receive the reward. And now enter into the city with the reward shining glory yeah, to all eternity. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Now this calls for us to embark on this journey of preaching the gospel to endure until the very end preaching this gospel in season and out of season for they that bring many to the Lord the Bible says they shall shine bright as the stars let's not forget that Can and we go to number four. The fourth thing that is missing. Remember there was no temple. We, there was no night. There was no light. And number four. There was no sin. There will be nothing unclean. There will be nothing detestable in the sight of God. There will be no false people in the presence of God. Those who remain in their sins, the Bible says they will not inherit the kingdom of God. First Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 9 to verse 10. Anything which may hinder access to God and worship is forbidden. So we cannot as candidates of what is to come now in this present time grow comfortable and entertain that which is detestable because that is not being forward looking we should invest our time in that which guarantees is our eternity. And the Bible tells us Bible that it is those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Lamb's Book of Life. Let's dwell on that for a moment. You see, Jesus Yesu, in the Book of Revelation is repeatedly pointed pointed to as the lamb. Now for you to understand the lamb, it takes you to the very beginning in the book of Genesis. Where the lamb was slaughtered. And because of the lamb, the wrath of God did not come to the houses that whose doorpost was smeared with the blood of the Lamb. God passed over 
His judgment passed over the houses, the households that had the blood of the lamb smeared on the doorposts. Because he declared that when I will see the blood, I will pass over. And as a result, we see a whole ceremony instituted by the children of Israel on their journey to the land of promise where every day in the morning and the evening Two lambs. Each the one in the morning and one in the evening. Were slaughtered. Why? To remind God's people that they were spared from God's justified wrath at their sin because God willingly accepted the blood of the innocent lamb. Mm -hmm. Now we understand oh, that these lambs were not sufficient Kate. to take away the blood. So God came down in the person of Jesus Christ and offered this sacrifice once and for all. Jesus became the lamb. That was slain. The one who rescued his people by his blood. So the people who were saved through Christ's sacrifice now have their names written in the Lamb's book of life. Now you ask me, is it literal, literal book or is it a symbolic book? The point is this. If you have not placed your faith in the Lamb of God, if you have not placed your faith in the saving grace of Jesus Christ, your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you don't have any access to the New Jerusalem. In the new earth and the new heaven, you don't have any place. But that can be changed. You see, I have preached to a number of people. And a lot of people, when you preach to them, they talk about their religion. But the point is this. Religion cannot save. When Jesus came on earth, religion did exist. It was very fervent. But it was not God's solution for the sin problem of mankind. God's solution for the sin of mankind is the Lamb of God. When John saw him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold God's solution that takes away the sins of God. Jesus is God's solution. Jesus is God's Lamb. Jesus is God's Lamb. God's only remediation for sin. And you and I we need to place our faith in him. God is the God of the living. And it is only the living, both now and forevermore that have their names in the book of life. Praise be to God. Otherwise, if you don't have that, you belong to the dead. And those have no inheritance with God. Make no mistake. The name of all those that are written only and only then 
will enter into God's kingdom. And the Lamb's book of life is the book of the living. And let me put it this way. The evidence of life. You may have seen it in a movie or whatever. When they want to test life, they test the pulse. When there is no pulse, it is the sign of death. Life is in the heartbeat. Life is not in a certificate. Let me bring the point home. You see, religion gives you a certificate as a sign of membership. But it is not the sign of life. The sign of life is the heartbeat. The life of God flowing in your life. Does that define you? If it does not, today is the day of salvation. Why don't you say this prayer? Say, God of heaven, I am a sinner. I need a savior in my life. All have sinned and come short of your glory. I am one of them. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. I believe that he died and rose on the third day. And through that resurrection, I can have life. Therefore, Lord Jesus, I invite you in my life as the Savior and the Lord of my life. Save me. Forgive me. Cleanse me and give me a new beginning both now and forevermore that I may live for you. and my name is written in the book of life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have said that prayer, there is a number on the screen. Please call. Somebody on the other side will receive it and give you the first instructions into this new journey of faith. And then when we cross over and that city is revealed where we have no temple, where we have no night, where we have no light, that comes from physical objects where we have no sin. You will have a portion. You will be a part of that grand entourage. The bride of the Lamb. Now the saints that are listening to us, we still have a job to do. To spread the news of Christ as the Savior and Lord for all mankind. Please, let's endure the work as soldiers and spread this gospel to all nations. And Jesus said, when the gospel has spread, then the end will come. That is what we are looking for. But more so, as long as it hurts, we have a job to do. Let's embark on it. And God will reward us as we wait for his coming. Let me wind up on this note. 
For those of us who have gone to a restaurant, there are all those wonderful men and women who provide the food. We call them waiters. The reason we are call, call them waiters is because their role is to wait on you. But they're not idle. In waiting, they are serving. So their role is to serve. As they are waiting on you, they are being of service to you. In the same way, our role is to wait. Wait for the Lord's coming. And as waiters, for the Lord's coming, we should wait while serving. Because waiting in the kingdom is service. So we should be serving until the very end. If we tarries, then we go to meet him. If he comes as we are still serving, either way it doesn't matter. At the end of this earth journey, we will have a reward. A reward for our labors. After our labors have been tested by fire. As we have seen in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And then we will enter into the city with the glory being carried with us with the honor of the master. Because our waiting brought glory to God when we were on earth. So don't give up. Even when you are not appreciated, heaven has taken notice. Keep serving. Keep going. Even when nobody notices what you do. There is a God who sees in the secret. And in the open. He will reward. You will not lose your reward. Because God is a data to no man. Every work that is done for his sake will receive its due reward. Keep going, brother. Keep going, sister. The Lord will word. He says, Behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with you. Wait on him. So, having looked at this, we now see the completion of everything John is saying. The majestic city which represents our future home. Where, where God's Glory is radiant. God's power is revealed. Where God's presence. The God who sits in unapproachable light. Now that light becomes made manifest in our presence. And we radiate the glory not from some object made by God but from God himself how glorious that one will be so as we close let's continue to work for the Lord let's continue to labor because we see that everything is present. Even what is missing, what is present is more glorious. That is our home. That is our future. That is our reward. From Dominion Church, we are saying, God, God bless you. As we continue. 
ngatwe yongera to labor okuweleza in the lord's vineyard munimiro ya mukama wafu so till next week baka ituna damu we say shalom tugamba mirembe god bless mukaba bawo mukisa amen amen